She is indeed the greatest star, the showgirl with a knack for singing, dancing and cracking jokes. A one-woman powerhouse carving out a niche for one-of-a-kind performances. Well, I could be describing funny girl protagonist Fanny Bryce, but in fact, that all applies to Christina Bianco, the actress who plays her and who joins us in the studio today. <laughs> Christina, hello. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Well, you're in Paris at the moment playing the multi-talented leading lady of the musical Funny Girl at the mm -hmm. Théâtre Marigny. And when I saw you on stage, I presumed the casting directors hunted you down for your incredible <laughs> voice and oh, your lovely. acting and dancing skills. But I heard you sort of auditioned for the job of course on I did. Twitter. <laughs> Explain. No. It's funny how the stories change uh, once they get out there. No, I auditioned like everybody else uh, in this business typically does. When you want a role, you tell your agent, they submit you, and hopefully the creative team agrees to see you. Um, I did something I usually don't do. I was a little bit aggressive, which uh, I know for Fanny Bryce might be very common, but for Christina Bianco it's not. Um, I saw that the director who I'm, you know, I've met a few times, I'm friendly with him, he tweeted that he was doing the show. And everyone, everybody of course responded, how wonderful, this will be a lovely project for you. And I wrote back, yes, it sounds wonderful, I can't, see, can't wait to see what you do with the production. And I know a petite New Yorker you should consider. <laughs> <laughs> and he happened to write back, you'd be fabulous. And I said, ha, ah, that means he'll see me. So I very aggressively told my agent, I really want to be seen for this, even though I was in the States. I said, let me submit a video and let me, you know, really be considered for this part. So I filmed one, one heck of a long <laughs> video, started the audition process, and here we are now. I'm so grateful to have got the job. Ah, it was destiny, clearly. Well, let's take a look at just how well that casting call paid off. Here's Christina <laughs> in Funny Girl performing the show-stopping Don't Rain On My Parade. At least I didn't fake it, hat, so I guess I didn't make it get ready for me love cause I'm a cover. I simply gotta watch my heart to drum and nobody, no, nobody. It's Well, just to reference that other th song, I don't think anyone's in any doubt about who's the greatest star after that number. But aside <laughs> oh, from your fantastic delivery, the message of that song is really quite important in the storyline yeah. because it's about Fanny Bryce's approach uh, to a performance. She wants to do things her way. And yeah. I wanted to know how much that resonates with you as a performer. Do you identify with her approach? It really does. I mean, p people have asked me many times, like, what, you know, what connects you to the role? What do you look for that when you got the part that you thought you could bring to it and pull from Fanny Bryce's life. And, you know, I, I'm a person in the performing arts. That means I am told very often, no. <laughs> you can't even get your foot in the door. And you have to be a bit of a fighter. And there's a very fine line between being uh, too aggressive and coming across as, you know, an egomaniac or too cocky and also as someone who could say, okay, no thanks, and walk away, and you don't get the opportunities that you really want or deserve. And so Fanny Bryce, to me, is such an inspiration because she was always a fighter. She always said, you need to see me, you need to consider me. And particularly as a woman in that time period, it was did not go over very well, particularly when you're dealing with big, powerful men like Florence Ziegfeld. And so for me, every day stepping into those shoes, I, I try to take a little bit of Fanny Bryce with me off of the stage as well. For me, as a performer, um, it's this challenge for me in general for many reasons. Oh goodness, we all have things that are um, hindrances to us. I'm very, very short. So very often I'm told, you're too short to exist, you're too short to be in this show, you're too short, you can't do it. And um, I'm also told I'm um, not the right look, not quite pretty enough, not quite funny looking enough, not quite whatever. There's always these not quites. People really want you to fit into a box. And I have never fit into a box, and I've been able to have a really nice, in my opinion, very happy, well-rounded career because I haven't been afraid to be myself. Definitely resonates with the message of the musical. Now, this latest production of Funny Girl here in Paris is getting rave reviews, but this is a city that's not synonymous with musical theatre, <laughs> like the West End in London yeah. or like Broadway in New York have been in the past. But the French appetite for musical theatre is certainly increasing, not only among those keen to go and see it, but also the young performers hoping to carve out a career career in the genre. Well, we went along to the Ecole de Comédie Musicale here in Paris to find out more from them. I think in the US you have lots of performers and people that are triple threats, are singer, dancer and actors really trained. But in France it's more about artists and what you can bring to the stage and what 
things that are personal you can bring to the stage. And so the difference is here. So you may not have better actors or better dancers, better singers in France, but you have actually lots of beautiful artists. I think France it's more a theatre country, so the traditional way is always to go directly to the theatre, but now with this new spirit and this new fashion in Paris about musical and musical show and pop show, they start to, to learn all the things in the meantime, and I think it's a good thing. It's true that here in France, the Broadway musical is seen as a specifically American genre. But what about the other side of that? Have any uh, French artists informed what you do or inspired you? Oh, goodness. Uh, yes, I mean, the most obvious example, but uh, the first one that comes to mind is Edith Piaf. I, uh, my family, my parents, always uh, raised me listening to many different genres of music. And so from a very young age, I was listening to classics, uh, classic performers and vocalists like Edith Piaf. And I fell in love with her voice and the music, that very romantic, haunting, soaring, uh, f traditionally for me, specifically French, music. Now, after the Funny Girl musical in 1964, Fanny Bryce was uh, played by by Barbara Streisand, which really propelled the yes. character to a global audience in uh, 1968. Now, when you took on the role, how much did you want to take from Streisand's performance? Were you inspired or did you want to distance yourself a bit? It was very hard for me because I grew up, obviously I was not born when the show was first on Broadway. I didn't see it. And in fact, Funny Girl was so is done so infrequently because nobody ever wants to try to step in Barbara Streisand's shoes. So I really hadn't seen any live productions of Funny Girl. I only knew the movie. And I loved the movie. I watched it backwards and forwards. And so uh, for someone like me who loves Barbara Streisand, I'm a singer from New York. I have no choice but to love Barbara <laughs> Streisand, you know. But also somebody, another part of my career is I love to do impressions. And I'm also known for impersonating her and the way she sings. It was very, very important that I completely distance myself from her performance and make something brand new. Um, there are a few little moments that I like to honor because she's so iconic. And in what she's done, particularly musically, she, she plays with the melody a lot. And if I sang exactly what was on the page, I think some of the audience members would go, but that's not how it goes, mm. because everyone knows how Barbara does it. And everyone that sung it after her copies what Barbara does. So there are a few times where I choose my battles a little bit and I give a little homage <laughs> to Barbara, like the end of Don't Rain on My Parade. That's not what's on the page, but I may do that. <laughs> um, but I do it for Barbara. Well, indeed, speaking of singing legends, you're something of an authority on divas, <laughs> because as you mentioned, you imitate a lot of them in your live comedy slash music shows, and your videos on YouTube have racked up tens of millions of views. <laughs> Christina's range is truly impressive, vocal gymnastics included. So here's a little taste of the diva mashup with Christina Bianco singing CeeLo Green's Forget You. <laughs> Barrymore. I mean, he's like an Xbox, and I'm more of an Atari. But the way you play isn't fair. Jenna with. I picked him up. Who falls in love with you? Bette Midler. Your such a golden artist goes to show. Bubble. So who is your favorite one? I have to ask. You did hear her a little bit there. I always say it was impossible to choose. But it's Celine Dion. Celine it's Celine Dion. Dion. She's my favorite because she gives me such a complete package. As a vocalist in general, for me to even try to copy what she does, be it singing her own songs or taking her voice and figuring out how she might interpret something she's never sung, like CeeLo Green's Forget You. She's got such a wide range, such a great voice. That's a challenge as a vocalist. But for me, it is the way that she talks and she speaks <laughs> and the mannerisms and how she sometimes puts the you know, incorrect emphasis on the wrong syllable uh, and the, the, the movements and the faces. She, she gives you so much to work with. Absolutely. Well, just to wrap up the show, <laughs> I was going to mention that you took your one woman uh, tour of impressions to the Edinburgh Festival last year, part of a full UK tour. Mm -hmm. And someone else who got a boost at the Edinburgh Fringe a few years ago was yeah. Phoebe Waller-Bridge uh, with the show... Fleabag, which went on to become that hit series. You found out about my obsession, yeah. Yes, yes. you told us it's a favourite of yours. Why? It is. Well, I think because I, it, again, in, in this industry, it, it's so much about creating your own opportunities, not waiting for somebody else to give them to you. Um, I never thought that, you know, posting some videos on YouTube would lead for me to get, uh, you know, concert gigs all over the world. But as soon as that opportunity happened, I made the most of it and I created my own shows and I built something. And I'm always was so inspired by the story of Phoebe Waller-Bridge and how she did this one woman show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival that has now led to not only Fleabag, but a huge career and being one of the most 
desired and most successful people, uh, you know, acting, singing, and producing, uh, singing, acting, writing, and producing in the entertainment field. And uh, I just think she's just an inspiration, and I totally love that show. A little too much. Okay, well, <laughs> it shows us that in show business, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. Christina Bianco, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Well, you can catch Christina in Funny Girl at the Théâtre Marigny until March 7th. And after two seasons, we're still not sure if Fleabag's ever coming back. So we'll wrap up the show with a reminder of the most recent series. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website and you can keep up with us on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. You look uh, strong. Oh, my God. Are you? I'm a pretty normal person. What makes you a normal person? I don't believe in God. Don't sleep with him. I won't. Don't. I won't. I don't do that anymore. What? You want to go and have sex? That's better. So I read your book. Do you think I should become a Catholic? No, don't do that. I like that you believe in a meaningless existence. <laughs> you know how to love better than anyone else. That's why you find it all so painful. I don't find it painful.